Today I'm going to walk you through installing the Epoch Batteries 48 volt 100 amp hour lithium LifePo 4 battery into my 2000 EasyGo TXT golf cart. I'm going to unbox everything. I'm going to show you how I pulled out the old batteries, how I installed the new batteries, show you a mistake that I made while I was doing the install. I'm going to take you through a full range test and then show you what a charge looks like from 32% all the way to 100, showing you exactly how much electricity that cost me and what my cost cost per mile is. This is my second of three install videos. And if you haven't seen the first one, go back and watch that one so you can see how I went from lead acid to the GC2 style batteries. Now we're gonna look at the 100 amp hour single unit that I've just unboxed and all the accessories that come with it. You need to know that it's 17 and a quarter inches between holes on the mount blades when you install the batteries. I went ahead and pre-charged the battery so that we'd be able to see exactly what it looks like when it gets to 100%. It does ship from the factory with about 40 to 50% charge and we'll get started on the install. I originally started with six lead acid batteries, but Epoch was nice enough to send over these four GC2 style lithium batteries. And they've been fantastic at 120 amp hours. They have great range on them, but it's time for them to go and let's test out how the 100 amp hour install went in. That means I need to remove all the batteries. I need to remove the Bluetooth modules. I need to remove the onboard charger and the onboard charge port, but I can leave the DC to DC converter installed because that DC to DC converter is the exact same in all the kits that come with it. So once I finish removing the onboard charger, it's time to go ahead and install the new charge port and the new 15 amp onboard charger. Note that both chargers are 15 amp, but they could be very different. So I didn't want to risk it by leaving the old 15 amp charger in there. I just went ahead and installed the new one with the new charge port and the new charge cable that plugs directly into the wall and plugs into your cart with a different style charge port on it rather than having an extension cord just plug into your cart. This is a little bit more convenient and you don't have to buy an extension cord that's specific to your golf cart. Once we've finished installing this onboard charger, it's time to move on to the mounting brackets. I'm just gonna finish cleaning up these cables before I move on. There are holes in the bottom of the frame that the mounting brackets could line up for. But if you line them up, there's not enough space in between the mounting bolts for the battery. It has to be 17 and a quarter inches. So we're gonna slide these brackets all the way to the edge of the frame rails and drill new holes. The mounting brackets do give you enough elevation to clear the tabs so you don't have to cut them off. Before we actually get the battery down in the compartment, I wanna go ahead and finish the install of the onboard charger and clear the wiring for it. And then we're gonna move on to the dash. Here I'm going to drill a 5 8 inch hole into the dash for the remote power switch. I still have to remove the old state of charge meter that came with the GC2 batteries before I install this onboard power switch. But this thing is super cool because you can actually kill the entire battery remotely without having to use an app or on-screen controller or something. This one works separately. You can actually take the wiring harness out of the back of the remote power switch. So you're gonna wanna disconnect that and then use the provided nut to install the power switch into your dash before reconnecting your power cable back up. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to put your state of charge meter through the hole that you already have in your dash or one that you drill in your dash. If you need to know how to do that, check out the other video and I'll show you exactly how I put the hole in there. And after that, after reconnecting your power switch back up, you're gonna to wanna to drill your state of charge retainer bolts holes so that you can put nuts on the end of them and secure that state of charge meter into the dash. Next, you're gonna to wanna to run that state of charge and remote switch cable through the back of your dash and down underneath your tire well before going underneath your golf cart so that you can run it through the existing frame rail channels that you have there. I ended up having to unclip some old wire ties that were in there and then put on some brand new wire ties as I ran the cable through the frame rail. It is really important to use wire ties down here every few inches because you do not want anything from the ground that could come up and snag these cables and pull them out. Watch out, it is very easy to break a nail if you do this, so be really careful. Note that this gigantic comms port plug will fit through the existing frame rail holes underneath the EasyGo TXT golf cart and allow you to run it up into the channel that you need to get into the battery compartment. We're gonna finish clipping off the ends of these wire ties and then we're gonna take this 100 pound battery and slide it down into the battery compartment. 
Note that I don't have the brackets mounted yet. I'm test fitting this to make sure that I know exactly where my holes need to be. But the good news about this battery is that you can slide it back and forth after you do your test fit. So you don't actually have to pull the whole thing out again. You can just slide it over to one side, drill your two holes for your one support bracket, and then slide it over to the other side and drill your other two holes before installing those bolts and lock washers so that you can secure those mounting brackets down to your frame rails. This was a pretty easy process. So I just used a drill bit to drill down through the frame and then I used a 13 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter boxed in wrench to secure those bolts and nuts so that they wouldn't loosen up over time. These are the ones that Epoch includes with the install kit. They give you four bolts to mount to your frame rails and then there's four more bolts so that you can secure the battery down to the elevated mounting bracket that again elevates up over those existing battery tabs that you had for your old lead acid battery. This was a super sweaty job, but you can actually knock out this entire install in about an afternoon. It doesn't take that long to pull out those old batteries and mount this new 100 amp hour battery in your golf cart so you can get some extended range out of it. Next up, we're gonna connect that communications port back up. Note that you do not need this connector. I've seen that question a lot on Facebook. They do include an extra connector in there. You don't need to hook it up to anything, so don't worry about it. When I first tried tried to turn on the power switch, I noticed that I didn't have anything on the state of charge meter. It turns out that the power cable that was connected to the back of the power switch fell off before I actually reinstalled the dash. So I pulled it out and reinstalled that power cable and ta-da, I've, got, I've now got power on my state of charge meter. I just wanted to make sure that the battery was working before I hooked everything up. So next, I'm going to take my smallest amperage draw and put that first on the screw and then go to the next amperage draw, which is going to be the charger, the onboard charger that I have, until finally I get to the one that's closest to the post, and that is my main negative cable here. You wanna make sure that all those cables angle down, and I'll show you why in a second, but it's so those plastic caps can fit down over the battery posts, and in my case, None of those actually fit for me. So even after tightening all these down and trying to slide on those plastic covers, the bolts themselves stick out too far when you have two or three terminals on there and the plastic caps won't fit. Now I actually did try combining two of the wires into one single terminal and with one terminal and then the connection, I made one of them fit. So I went to Amazon and looked for a solution. I found these from Amazon. I'll put a link down to them below. They were fairly cheap and you can slide those over your cables and they will protect them later after you finish your install. I do like to clean up my messes. So I take more wire ties in here and tighten up all those cable bundles and make sure that everything is nice and organized before I finish my install. I like to do that no matter where I am or what I'm installing and it just looks cleaner and it's easier to get back to later. Next, you're gonna flip that run toe switch and we're gonna go out for a range test. So I did actually go out for a 20 mile range test and in part of the process, one of the candy canes that holds on the extended top that I have actually broke and I had to fashion on a strap to hold that on. But that didn't stop me. I stopped the timer while I was moving as my goal was to get to a full 20 miles on this trip. You can see that my top speed on 23 inch tires was roughly around 32 miles an hour during this range test. It goes up and down, but you can also see the discharge from the Epoch Batteries app on the right. It's showing 59, 58, 57 as it goes down for this 100 amp hour battery. After roughly 20 miles of driving around the neighborhood and the sidewalks and different areas up and down hills, I managed to have 32% left over at the end. That's pretty respectable for 20 miles. I'm not complaining at all. I think a 100 amp hour battery is probably a good size for most people. And I would estimate that overall, you should be able to get about 30 miles on a 100 amp hour battery with my Alltrax XCT400 upgraded controller and my upgraded D&D motor that I have on there. And again, the 23 inch road tires that I had on there. Now, after I finished, I went ahead and plugged it in to test the charge out. And you can see it draws about 
seven amps once it kind of warms up through the warm up process at 120 volts and I just let it charge. It took a few hours for it to completely charge up from 33% all the way to 100. You can see the state of charge meter there is ticking up as it charges to let you know that it's in the state of charge process. Plus you can hear the charger fan motor run while it's running. Once it's done charging, if you take a look inside, you'll see a green light on top of the charger that will let you know that the charge has finished. All of the install looks good. The battery is now back up to 100% again, and I can actually unplug it from the wall and take the card out again for an additional test. It used roughly five kilowatt hours to go from 32% to 100%. That's basically 35 cents in my area for about 20 miles. Now you can't get anything near that using a car. So I think that's a pretty good cost return for that lithium battery and based on the mileage that you get. I did test out the 160 amp hour battery as well. And that one's going to be coming up as my next video. So if you haven't liked and subscribed, please be sure and do that. And I'll let you know exactly how many miles I get out of that 100 160 amp hour battery. Thanks everyone for watching. Please post any questions or comments you have down below and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.